Coachella Valley has a rich cultural history. I'm Steve Sumrall. Join me as I take you on a tour through our desert past. Well, in honor of Black History Month, our Steve Summerall looks back at the legacy of a man who broke through the color barrier of the architectural design profession to build some of the most recognizable buildings in Palm Springs, as well as some of the most iconic structures in the world. This is Paul Revere Williams, architect of the stars and our part of our desert past. The Castle Palmeiras apartment complex is sat at this location on Tamaris Road since its construction in 1928. It was built in the Spanish colonial revival style, which to this day remains popular in the Coachella Valley. The purpose of this structure was to provide housing to a growing population. Since the number of seasonal visitors has grown to about 15,000 after World War I, the following year, a filled apricot farm was renovated into the Deepwell Guest Ranch, a western theme resort which became an ideal destination for the rich and famous. The Castle Palmeiras apartment and the Deepwell Guest Ranch was designed by an architect named Paul Revere Williams. You may not know his name, but you have seen his work. In fact, the first thing that many people see after entering California is Williams' iconic structure which towers over LAX. The Beverly Hills Hotel is another one of Williams' memorable designs. He designed almost every type of building. He designed the courthouse on Bunker Hill in downtown Los Angeles. He designed high-rise office buildings in Westwood. He designed churches. Williams designed well over 2,000 buildings throughout his career, much of the time facing opposition. The reason for this? Paul Revere Williams was African-American. In fact, he was the first African-American architect to be certified west of the Mississippi. He wasn't that aware of racial discrimination as a young boy. But as he became a professional, he, he had to confront it. He was shocked and disappointed and even angered by that sort of discrimination. Williams had been warned that entering his chosen profession would be an uphill battle. Architectural historian Alan Hess explains. One of his uh, school teachers, when he expressed an interest in architecture, the school teacher told him, uh, no, you become a, a doctor or a lawyer because African-Americans will hire a black doctor or a lawyer, but there isn't enough money in the African-American community to support an African-American architect. With courage and dignity, Williams was able to endure despite the discrimination he faced every day. Most notably, figuring out how to work in a handshake business where nobody wants to shake your hand. Out on the building site and talking with the client or contractors, builders, etc., he would keep his hands in his suit coat pocket to, to avoid uh, the white client or contractor having to shake his hand. Another challenge, how do you show your work to potential clients when they refuse to sit next to you? He uh, had this talent where he could sit on the opposite side of the table and draw upside down so that the white client on the other side would be able to see the drawing and understand it, but not have to go through the awkwardness of many of actually sitting next to an African-American. And because of the social climate at the time, Paul Revere Williams was not allowed to live in any of the neighborhoods of the homes which he had designed. He was building huge, beautiful mansions in Beverly Hills and in Flint Ridge. And he himself lived in a very modest bungalow in an African-American area. Williams would return to Palm Springs in the mid 40s. With fellow architect A. Quincy Jones, he would redesign the Palm Springs Tennis Club in 1947. The additions to the property which the two men created fit well into the natural scenery. Instead of distracting from the desert landscape, they enhanced it. Throughout the late 40s and early 50s, Williams and Jones would continue to modernize Palm Springs. Their next project would be the town and country restaurant and shopping center. You uh, walk in down a narrow alleyway off of Palm Canyon into this beautiful courtyard, and that's where the stores and the restaurants 
on two stories were. Now this area is known for housing the original Desert Sun newspaper office, as well as Zelda's nightclub, which would eventually take over the restaurant location. Then, in 1952, Williams was tasked with updating the iconic El Mirador Hotel. This more glamorous structure became a hot spot for movie stars, moguls, and politicians. The El Mirador also housed the Valley's first television station, an NBC affiliate which you may be familiar with. In 1954, Williams designed the first home in Thunderbird Country Club. It was an informal ranch home built for Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz on a plot of land that Desi supposedly won in a card game. Frank Sinatra had him design a house in uh, Los Angeles, up in the hills. Williams also built homes for Lon Chaney, Tyrone Power, and Barbara Stanwyck, just to name a few. His client list garnered him the nickname Architect of the Stars. Hollywood turned out to be a really good place for him to get clients. These stars from humble backgrounds um, did not have the same prejudices of the establishment. Since then, a lot of Hollywood stars um, are still buying and restoring and living in Paul Williams' houses. He still has that cachet uh, that people like uh, Denzel Washington and uh, Ava Gabor and Bob Iger of Disney, all of them have lived or do live in uh, old Paul Williams' houses because of the, you know, the high quality that he brought to all of his designs to begin with. And one benefit of William's success was the ability for him to take care of his own. Because, of course, at the time, there were often racial restrictions where African-Americans could not buy in certain housing tracts. Uh, so he uh, would build for the African-American community. In 1980, Paul Revere Williams passed away at his home in Los Angeles. Then, in 2017, a posthumously received award brought a renewed interest in his career. He won the uh, gold medal of the American Institute of Architects a couple of years ago. Of course, it was 40-some years after he died, but nonetheless, it uh, was a, uh, an honor. For our Desert Past, Steve Sumrall, NBC Palm Springs, News First.